Sin Chao. Thank you, President Quang, for your generous words. And let me thank you and the government and the people of Vietnam for the sincere welcome and hospitality that has been extended to me and to my delegation. Over the past century, our two nations have known cooperation and then conflict, painful separation, and a long reconciliation. Now, more than two decades of normalized ties between our governments uh, allows us to reach a new moment. It's clear from this visit that both our peoples are eager for an even closer relationship, a deeper relationship. And I was moved to see so many people lining the streets uh, as we were driving into town today. I bring greetings and friendship of the American people, including uh, some outstanding members of Congress who are joining me on this visit, uh, and so many Vietnamese Americans whose families bind us together and remind us of the values that we share. Uh, I've indicated before that one of my highest foreign policy priorities as president is to ensure that the United States continues to play a larger and long-term role in the Asia-Pacific which is vital to our security and to our prosperity. We believe the people of this region should live in security, prosperity, and dignity. In pursuit of this vision, we're more deeply engaged across the Asia Pacific than we have been in decades, and that includes our comprehensive partnership with Vietnam. If you consider where we have been uh, and where we are now, the transformation in the relations between our two countries is remarkable. Over the past two decades, our trade has surged nearly a hundredfold, supporting jobs and opportunities in both countries. Since I took office, we've boosted U.S. exports to Vietnam by more than 150 percent. We're now the single largest market for Vietnam's exports. American companies are one of the top investors here. With our Fulbright programs, thousands of our students and scholars have studied together, and more than 13,000 young people across Vietnam are learning new skills as part of our Young Southeast Asian Leaders Initiative. Vietnam has become one of the top 10 countries with students in the United States. This year, we've welcomed nearly 19,000, the most ever. And last year, Vietnam welcomed nearly half a million American tourists to this country, and uh, I will assure you that more are on the way. Our two governments are also cooperating more closely than ever. As part of our engagement with ASEAN and the East Asia Summit, we're working together to advance regional security and stability. Vietnam has welcomed American Navy ships to your ports. Our militaries are conducting more exchanges and partnering on maritime security. Together, we're pursuing the Trans-Pacific Partnership, not only to support trade, but to draw our nations closer together and reinforce regional cooperation. We're doing more to meet global challenges, from preventing nuclear terrorism to promoting global health security so that outbreaks of disease don't become epidemics. And with this visit, the United States and Vietnam have agreed to a significant upgrade in our cooperation across the board. We're taking new steps to give our young people the education and skills that they need to succeed. And I'm very pleased that, for the first time, the Peace Corps will come to Vietnam. Our Peace Corps volunteers will focus on teaching English, and the friendship that our people forge will bring us closer to, together for decades to come. University and others will help Vietnamese universities boost training in science, technology, engineering, and math. Harvard Medical School, Johnson & Johnson, GE, and others will join with Vietnam, uh, Vietnam uh, universities uh, to improve medical education. And now that the government of Vietnam has granted the necessary license, we can say that Fulbright University Vietnam, this country's first nonprofit independent university, can move forward and open its doors and welcome its first class this fall. We're increasing trade. With Vietnam's announcement on multiple entry visas, it will be easier for Americans to come here and do business and travel. President Quang and I just attended a signing ceremony that many of you saw where American and Vietnamese companies are moving ahead with a new commercial deals worth more than $16 billion. Boeing will sell 100 aircraft to Vietjet. Pratt & Whitney will sell advanced engines. GE Wind will partner 
with the Vietnamese government to develop more wind power. Deals like these are a win for both of our countries, helping to fuel Vietnam's, Vietnam's economic, economic, economic growth, growth and supporting, and supporting tens, tens of thousands, of thousands of American, American jobs. jobs. We agreed to work to ratify and implement the Trans-Pacific Partnership as soon as possible because it will support vital economic reforms here, further integrate Vietnam into the global economy, and reduce tariffs on American exports to Vietnam. And we discussed the high standards that Vietnam has committed to meet under TPP on labor, the environment, and intellectual property. And I conveyed that the United States is prepared to offer technical assistance to Vietnam as it works to fully implement these standards so that TPP delivers the benefits that our peoples expect. With regard to security, the United States will continue to do our part to address the painful legacy of war. On behalf of the American people, including our veterans, I want to thank the government and the people of Vietnam for the many years of cooperation to account for Americans missing in action. Solemn efforts that will continue together. We'll continue to help remove unexploded landmines and bombs. And now that our joint effort to remove dioxin, Agent Orange, from Da Nang Airport is nearly complete, the United States will help in the cleanup at Bien Hoa Air Base. We've agreed to continue deepening our defense cooperation, including patrol boats and training for Vietnam's Coast Guard, and to work more closely together in responding to humanitarian disasters. And I can also announce that the United States is fully lifting the ban on the sale of military equipment to Vietnam that has been in place for some 50 years. As with all our defense partners, sales will need to still meet strict requirements, including those related to human rights. But this change will ensure that Vietnam has access to the equipment it needs to defend itself and it removes a lingering vestige of the Cold War. It also underscores the commitment of the United States to a fully normalized relationship with Vietnam, including strong defense ties with Vietnam and this region for the long term. More broadly, the United States and Vietnam are united in our support for a regional order, including in the South China Sea, where international norms and rules are upheld, where there is freedom of navigation and overflight, where lawful commerce is not impeded, and where disputes are resolved peacefully through legal means in accordance with international law. I want to repeat that the United States will continue to fly, sail, and operate wherever international law allows, and we will support the right of all countries to do the same. Now, even as we make important progress in the ways that I've just described, there continue to be areas where our two governments disagree, including on democracy and human rights. And I made it clear that the United States does not seek to impose our form of government on Vietnam or any nation. We respect Vietnam's sovereignty and independence. At the same time, we will continue to speak out on behalf of human rights that we believe are universal, including freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of religion, and freedom of assembly. And that includes the right of citizens through civil society to organize and help improve their communities and their country. Uh, we believe, and I believe, that nations are stronger and more prosperous when these universal rights are upheld. And when our two countries uh, continue to discuss these issues as part of our human rights dialogue in a spirit of construction, uh, constructive uh, and cooperative uh, effort. And finally, the United States and Vietnam are expanding our cooperation in ways that benefit the world. Under our growing climate change partnership, we'll support Vietnam as it works to meet its commitments under the Paris Agreement. Because our two countries and others have committed to joining the agreement this year, we're within striking distance of it entering into force before anybody expected. Uh, in the meantime, we'll help communities in vulnerable regions like the Mekong Delta adapt to a changing climate and assist Vietnam's transition to a low-carbon economy. And that includes the low-carbon energy that will come from our cooperation on civil nuclear power. And as Vietnam prepares to deepen its commitment to UN peacekeeping, the United States is proud to support Vietnam's new peacekeeping training center. So again, President Quang, thank you for your hospitality. Thank you for our work together. I'm looking forward to the opportunity to visit with the Vietnamese people. Uh, maybe I will enjoy some cafe suada. Uh, I believe that the relationship between the Vietnamese people and the United States can be one of the most important in this critical part of the world. And I believe that 
the upgrade in our ties that we've achieved today will deliver greater security, prosperity, and dignity for both of our peoples for many decades to come. Sin Kamu.